the one thing I want you to take away from this video is to never ever let anyone bully you in your life. A couple years ago, I used to grow marijuana. And now I had this project with this guy named Eric. I met Eric through a guy named Lynn. Eric and Lynn, they were best friends. And me and Lynn, we were good friends. Our families knew each other growing up as kids. So he was more like a family friend to me. Keep in mind, Lynn was the type of person where he wanted people to kind of fall in line behind him. But as a man, that's just not who I am. I'm not going to play this game of falling in line, playing this stupid thing to try to gain power through him and kind of ride his coattails. That just wasn't me. Now, Eric, on the other hand, he was someone that lacked confidence, someone that had a weak character, and he always rode the coattails of Lin. And that's why they kind of got along really well. And I think Lin liked that that dynamic between the two Eric was a bitch and he was a leader and he would just kind of follow along now me and Eric we ended up going forward and starting this project with uh, growing weed Eric when I mentioned he had a weak character and uh, what I meant was that he was socially awkward he didn't have a lot of friends uh, he had issues with confidence within himself and then third he had he had confidence and issue problems with girls. When it came down to dating, he had a very difficult time. He was nervous talking to girls in person or just, you know, romantically f just dating. He had a difficult time. Even though me and Eric, we did business together, we weren't really the best of friends. So we hung around in this big group. And when Eric got with this girl, there was this rumor going around and everyone was telling me that Eric didn't want me around when his girl was around because he was scared I was going to steal her away. That tripped me out because when it came to girls, he knew how I got down. He saw me firsthand how I, how I handle my business when it comes to girls. So for me, stealing his girl was not even a thought that even crossed my mind. That was insane. We have different tastes as far as girls goes as well. For me to hear that, it kind of baffled me, but I didn't let it bother me. That was the one thing. I didn't let it get to me. Whatever. Cool. That's how he feels. Whatever. It's not a big deal. And then plus, it was just a rumor that everyone was saying to me. So I'm not going to take their word for it. I have to kind of hear it from Eric, but it was just in the back of my head. Going forward a couple months, we ended up finishing uh, this yield and we pulled down eight pounds when I say pull down eight pounds means that the whole process finish of growing, we cut it, we let it dry, we trimmed it, we weighed it out. It weighed out to be eight pounds. So that day we left kind of happy because eight pounds is not a bad pull, right, for a small project. And Eric and, and Lynn, they were together because Lynn helped us with this uh, one pull. He was helping us trim and he was trying to get it, go ahead and get it sold, right? He'll make a little bit off top. That night, Eric and Lynn, they left. They were trying to make their calls to go ahead and have someone buy this stuff. And I was trying to make my calls to go ahead and have this uh, purchased as well. So we ended up splitting. And that night, I ended up going out with some friends. We ended up drinking, things like that, We're having our fun. I was kind of celebrating a little bit because we just finished. Before we left the uh, work location, though, we had it on a sheet of paper. And we wrote down how much was on there, right? It was supposed to be eight. But someone had wrote seven. And, you know, I was the closest one to the work location. So I get a call from Eric and Lynn. They're like, yo, can you go check to see how much uh, we yield? I said, sure, whatever. So I pulled up, checked the paper. It says seven. So I give them a ring. <laughs> yo, it says seven. They're like, what, seven? Uh, okay, cool. Hung up. I went back to partying. The next day, I get a call. And it was from Lynn. And he was like, yo. Why did you say it was seven when we yielded eight? And I was like, what are you talking about, bro? I just read to you whatever is on the piece of paper. He goes, wait, were you trying to steal one pack to pocket that money? And I was like, wait, what? I was like, bro, I just woke up. I have a little hangover and I got a long day. So I just hung up on him. A couple hours later, I get another call from him. And he goes, yo, we got to meet up. Eric said he wants out the business, man. He said, you're trying to bully him and you're trying to steal money, X, Y, Z. I was like, bro, whatever, dog. If he wants out, let's, I'll buy him out. Cool. That's no problem at all. 
Day goes by. I call up two of my homies. We end up going to go eat. Lynn had this notion where he thought I was bullying Eric. And Eric was too afraid to meet up with me and talk to me as a man, person to person, to try to figure this thing out. So instead, he had Lynn as his liaison to speak for him. And that's why Lynn ended up coming through and just talking. We went to go eat dinner. Lynn pulls up. He pulls up with his girl, Sophia. They walk into the restaurant. I'm sitting on one end with two of my friends to my left and right. Lynn sitting on the other side across from me at this booth with his girl. And he gets to talking. I let him do all this yapping. He talks about how I'm trying to bully Eric and how I'm a bully myself and that uh, I'm trying to steal money. And at the end of it, he goes, you need to buy Eric out. I say, cool, no big deal. I'll buy him out. This project will be mine. And he goes, on top of that, because of how you try to steal and it caused all this headache and made me late on my payments because I was supposed to get some from this this pool. Now you owe me 10,000 bucks. And I was like, wait, what? How are you 10000 for what? This is me and Eric's project. You had nothing to do with this. We put in the money. We did this. We did that. He goes, no, you owe me $10,000. And if you don't pay me within a week by Sunday at midnight, I'm going to have people show up to your house and collect. And he goes, I know your mom and sister live with you, but business is business. He left. But he, before he left, he's... He had this air of arrogance, his chest up, his chin up. He says, you better pay or else I'm going to send people. And he ended up just walking out tough, a little swag on his walk. And I thought to myself, I was like, whoa, this guy is talking big badass. And I've never, ever seen him pull a trigger in my life. I want to see what he does. So, you know, after he left... My brain just started running a little bit. I started thinking, oh shit, okay, I got to call up some soldiers. I got to go get some toys. I got to be prepared because I'm not paying no 10 racks. Screw that. Now, the days go by. It's getting closer to Sunday. And I have some soldiers come through, right? Sunday comes. Sunday morning rolls around. They come over. We have breakfast. We talk about what's going to go down. And we just made it simple. When it gets a little bit closer to midnight, I'm going to have a couple of guys across the street, a couple of guys down the road. And we're just going to just do a watch out. Or we're going to hide. So if he does come through, they're going to be stuck because I live in a dead end area. They have nowhere to escape. There's only one way in and one way out. Around 10 o'clock, we have everyone separate. You know, we all have our toys. We're all ready. Everybody's in place. 11.30 rolls around. We're getting a little bit more anxious. 11.30 p.m. It's getting close to midnight. He said he was going to come through at 12 o'clock at midnight. Midnight comes. Not a peep. You have to keep in mind the area where I lived in was very quiet. It was an older neighborhood. It was very, it was more of an upscale kind of neighborhood. So not a lot of activity that goes down. I was probably the most active neighborhood uh, neighbor that was there playing loud music, having friends coming in and out. One o'clock comes, nobody. Two o'clock comes. <laughs> we kind of just give it up because we, we, f- we figured this dude ain't coming. And I remember we all just came back to the house. We, we gathered together and we started talking, man, this fool is a bitch. If it was a punk, man, if it never showed up. And I remember everyone was kind of talking. I walked away to myself to just kind of distance and have a little thoughts. And I remember thinking to myself, I should have known, man. The person with the loudest bark usually has the softest bite. And that was that full Lin. All talk, no walk. Puffed out his chest like he was a big bad motherfucker and didn't do shit. So the one thing I want you to take away from this video that I want you to do is if you have anyone in your life that's bullying you, that's trying to press up on you and take something that's not theirs, that's yours, I want you to fight back. It doesn't matter if you're going to go down swinging. As long as you go down swinging is what really matters. So that's the one thing I want you to do today. Don't let anyone ever bully you in your life.